that's the end of our little movie. Sorry, the special effects department didn't have the budget for the six-foot stone ball to chase me out of the house. But welcome back to Suburban Garage Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you some items that I've created, modeled myself, and used in the, in the workshop for 3D printing. So 3D printing can be used for more than just uh, printing your favorite movie props, whether it be this forbidden South American idol, or this weird space freighter from an unknown uh, space movie that very few people have ever seen. Same actor, by the way. So let me show you what I've built, what I've modeled and built to solve some problems in the workshop. So let's get at it. So I first needed to solve a problem with the new workbench I built. So if I move around back, you'll see I'm using one of these Rockler Dustrite quick change hose systems, and they work great. The problem is, is that's a four inch in, or four inch hose, and I need to adapt it to the two and a half inch dust port on the DeWalt. So I'm using this adapter that comes with a dust right system. The problem is the adapter sticks out so far that my outfeed table won't close all the way. So I need to figure out a solution for that. So this is the adapter in question. You can see how large it is. Now I think I can go ahead and take these measurements and combine it and shrink this down into something more like a donut shape. And you'll see this is actually fairly restrictive in the middle. So I'm using SketchUp, which is the same software I designed my workbench in. But in this case, I'm going to use it to model basically a 3D printed part. Now, SketchUp isn't the best software to use for this, but it can be used if needed. And after several hours of printing, we have our new part. So we can take a look at what it looks like next to the original part, much smaller. All right, and let's see how it fits. So we'll go ahead and plug it in. And uh, oh, and we have a problem. I didn't account for that uh, bar that runs, that basically that frame bar. So I'm going to have to redesign this part. So after a little redesign work in SketchUp and several more hours of 3D printing, we have round two. You can see here I've offset the hole quite a bit. So let's give this one a test fit. So it looks good. Let's give it a, see how it fits. Oh, we're still hitting that crossbar. But I think if I just raise the saw a little bit or tilt the saw, I can get it past that crossbar and we should be good. So I'm just gonna move around to the front. I'm gonna tilt that saw a little bit and then we can come around and uh, snap that back on. Hey, success. Okay, let's plug our hose in, and oh, now that's hitting the crossbar. Well, you know what they say, third time's the charm. Here I offset the hole even more. I also made that hole a little smaller in the middle to give a tighter fit on the actual DeWalt saw. All right, let's give it a test fit. Um, the adapter appears to go on. I don't have to actually tilt the saw to get the adapter on. It fits nice and snug, so much so that I'm gonna pop it in place with my palm of my hand. And uh, let's, uh, let's try it out. Hey, success. We're there finally. The hose pops off easily, and now let's go ahead and try closing the table. And it closes all the way. Excellent. So problem solving with the 3D printer. What else can we do with the 3D printer? Let's see what else we can make. So I designed and 3D printed these little T-Track clamps. And there's two different orientations depending on if you're holding it one way or the other. So in this case, you see I've got the first one in place. Here's the other orientation. And they've got a little notch in the bottom, which I'll show here in a second. But here, these can be used to as either stops to keep wood from moving when you're playing or doing some kind of operation. Or they can be used as kind of clamps to kind of keep things in place. Now here's another 3D printed part. Now I didn't design this. Now I showed this in my last video briefly, but I didn't really talk about it. These actually work really great. And I use these all the time. And they really work to basically hold things in place. Um, and they're inexpensive. I mean, you can, you, can, you can print dozens of these for the cost of one of these bought commercially. Let me show you another application for these um, stops and clamps. Here I'm using it as a stop on my miter saw. And I can also use the clamp to hold things in place. They even work on my drill press table. So like here I can use it as a stop. I can use it as a kind of a clamp to hold wood up against the fence. Or I can come in with my the other clamps and I can use it to hold stock firmly down in place so nothing moves. Well, I like this Craig AccuCut system. The problem is, is sometimes the track slides around when you're trying to cut with it. So to be able to fix that, I could put a clamp in the slot on the bottom of the track and clamp it down to the piece of wood I'm cutting and it holds it firmly in place. Let me show you a couple other things that I downloaded. Um, I didn't design these, but I downloaded. So here I've actually downloaded this little holder and it holds my router insert plates. And I just put a French cleat on the back of it so I can hang it right on my wall. Here's another little nifty thing I downloaded. It holds all my little bits and it's already got a French cleat built into it. This thing is really handy and I really have used this quite a bit. 
So you can see there's lots of opportunity for 3D printing things inexpensively that can really help out in the workshop. Now, if I was to buy all these clamps and things of that nature, um, I don't know, I'd probably be looking at like $100 worth of different various parts. You know, each of these, uh, if you buy these things online, these things are 10 to $15 each. Now they're made of, usually made of aluminum, but these plastic ones hold just as firmly. I'm sure you could wrench the aluminum down way, ones way stronger. But for the purpose of holding a board in place, these are plenty strong. But I printed all these, all this material, not including any hardware, but just the material, maybe three or four dollars worth of filament versus the cost of just one of those clamps, which is ten dollars and up. So by doing this stuff, you can save a lot of money. Sure, you've got to buy a printer, but those printers are come down way in price. So what I'm using, I paid like $195 for it. Filament spools, filament spools, $20 for a spool for a one kilogram spool, roughly. But I could print all of this stuff and use less than a quarter of a spool, maybe an eighth of a spool. I'm not really sure. I'd have to go check. But my point is, this is something that can save you money in the long run. And you can actually make custom parts that are just not available on the market to fit specific needs. Sure, you're going to have to learn a little bit of software, but that software is relatively easy to use. And there's a billion tutorials online that show you how to use the software so you can build simple parts like this. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. If you did, give me a like. I like your comments. Leave me a comment. If you haven't subscribed, please do and ring that bell button. You'll get notified the next time I put a video out. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Get out in the garage and build something. Bye.